Please, Jim. Back on down the line. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the presentation of colors and the playing of our national anthem. Colors are being presented tonight by Highlands Navy Junior OTC. Cadets Madison Howard, Brianna Tuggle, Lindsey Wickham, and commanded by Austin Grandstaff. Madison Howard is carrying the U.S. Navy flag this evening, representing our Navy and all sailors past and present. And now, the Star Spangled Banner. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2022 Highland Marching Scott.
Good evening. This is Fishburne Family Field at Coverage Stadium on the campus of Highland High School in Sparta, Ohio. Welcome to the start of the 2022 Ohio High School football season here on Above the Light Productions. I'm Keith Kokenda along with our technical crew, Travis Reese and Skyler Kokenda, to bring you once again the home football games for the Highland Fighting Scots in 2022. After a successful 2021 season, Scott's going 7-3 and three in the regular season, sharing the Knox Morrow Athletic Conference Championship with East Knox. A nice little going away present, if you will, as the Fighting Scots now are fully members of the Mid-Ohio Athletic Conference, a uh, league which they started back in 1990. They were a charter member of the MOAC back then, then left for a few years and now are back. Although tonight is a K-Mac throwback as they take on the Fredericktown Freddies, who were a league opponent last season. And these two teams met on October 1st of last year. It was a comprehensive win for Highland, 41-20 to over the Freddies, a game which was pretty much effectively over at halftime. Fredericktown with higher expectations coming into this season. Those are many of the uh, media observers here in Morrow and Knox counties are picking the Freddies to win the K-Mac this season. It is certainly an improved team, a very experienced team with a number of explosive players on offense. It'll be a challenge for this Highland defense, which played a very big role, albeit an understated role last season, especially in the middle part of the year when league play began. Uh, they played very well against some very tough opponents. Uh, only uh, East Knox was uh, able to derail them in league play late in the season. Of course, all the attention for Highland focused on Dane Nauman, last year's super sophomore, running for a school record 2,500 yards. He'll be obviously the key to the Highland offense as well as the number one uh, target for opposing defenses this season. Highland will be coming in with a new quarterback and new wide, mostly new wide receivers. Colton Stover, the left-handed sophomore, will take the controls of the Highland offense this season. The coaches are counting on his athleticism to help spread the offense and change things up to give some variety to the offense, especially throwing the football to keep defenses as focusing on Nauman, now a junior, who will also play linebacker again this season as well. Nauman was held out of most of training camp, including both preseason scrimmages, a few, a few knocks that he had picked up in training camp, and the coaches thought, why should you just save him for the season? You see the pride of Highland, the marching Scots out there lined up, awaiting the entrance of the, of the Highlanders to start this 2022 season. There will be a couple new faces on the offensive line as well that Norman will have to run behind, although he will still have Layden Hayes, and Landon Pedigo on that right side to run behind. Fredericktown, on the other hand, making a few changes on offense, most notably changing quarterbacks. Ben Mast, the senior, who took over toward the end of last season, played the last two regular season games, plus their uh, playoff loss in the first round last season. And Fredericktown finished five and five in the regular season, and again ended up five and six with that playoff loss. They were sixth in the league with a three and four record under Coach Will Hartley, now in his sixth season, and even twenty-seven and twenty-seven for his career at Fredericktown. They're kids at the end of the day, but the Freddies are, have some big weapons on offense. Most notably, Cade Carpenter. He was the original starting quarterback. It was the starter when these two teams played back in this past October. The 6'5 senior will make a big target at wideout this year for Ben Mast. They also have two very good running backs in junior Tegan Rule and senior Mason Hoflick. 
the officials for tonight's game. For both these teams, the majority of their starters will be playing Referee, both ways. Joe uh, there will be some rotation on Highland and defense, especially in the secondary. They took a big blow in training camp when they lost uh, lost senior Gavin Hankins to a season-ending injury during training camp, and he was a big part of the defense last season. So they will miss him defensively. So we'll see rotation of four cornerbacks on the Highland defense this season, trying to stop all these pass-happy offenses that they will face. A couple of, you know, few common opponents for Highland this season. In addition to Fredericktown, here come the Freddies from our right. Looking very much like Ohio State. The road uniforms, that is. As they'll, Highland, will also, Highland will also be playing Ontario and River Valley. Those will go both be league games this season. Those were non-league games last year, in fact, with, with River Valley. That game, the, the penultimate game of the regular season, will be played at River Valley, and that was to balance out the schedule. Uh, they, the two teams played up in Caledonia last season as well, but to balance out the league schedule, uh, they were forced to schedule that game as another road game, so that way starting in 2023, the rotation will be back in place. And they're ready to come out, the 2022 Highland Fighting Scots. There, the Scott, the Scott's breaking through the banner, and a little different look on the home uniforms. Going with the blue pants at home this year, they were in the white pants at home last year and wore blue on the road, much like the Buffalo Bills do. There you see, and there you see, forty-two Day Nam, and now the junior. Freddie's one to toss and deferred, so they will attack left to right here, and they'll have the ball to start this game. So we'll get to see that Highland defense at the beginning here. It'll be Kane Carp Kate Carpenter and Logan Small, both seniors, back to return. And Carpenter will be a starting wide out for the Freddies in their four wide offense. Yeah. And it will be Caleb Hunter, now a senior, to kick things off. He was an honorable mention, all Ohio selection last season, scoring 58 points. Uh, Ty Stover is cautiously optimistic about this season. He's been very uh, pleased with how the offensive and defensive lines have developed during training camp, and that offensive line especially is going to be very important, both in terms of clearing space for Dane Nauman as well as giving time to Colton Stover in the passing game, although uh, they mentioned his athleticism will make a big difference. He's a much better athlete than last year's quarterback, Cooper Merkling. A gorgeous night here in North Central Ohio as we get the 2022 Ohio High School football season underway. Caleb Hunter to kick off for the Highlanders. And here we go, high short kick going to the far side. He wants Logan Small there to take it on the bounce at the seven. And he's brought down at the 19-yard line. Like Court Sears starting cornerback in on that tackle. Number 21, Court Sears on the stop for the Scots. So the Freddies up front will have Jackson Dupe 57 at uh, Braden Sapp 62 at left tackle. Jackson Dupe 57 at left guard. Cameron Colbull, number 70, is the center. 
Right guard, uh, right guard is Blake Tucker, number 60, and the biggest man on the offensive line, one of the biggest men on the offensive line at 250. Also, Lucas Herbst, the right tackle, 6'4", 250, spread offense. As Mass will send Carpenter in motion, give it to him on the jet sweep. Oh, but yeah. Dane Nauman is there to bring him down for a loss. Dane Nauman on the stop, number 42. So Dane Nauman with a big stop on Cade Carpenter. Carpenter, a tremendous athlete, 6'5", 200, also plays center on the basketball team and pitches on the baseball team. All, all three sports, he wears number one. So they'll go three wide. See Carpenter, the widest, just out of your picture. Mast is looking that way. Great protection, but now Mast has to move. It's through the hands of his intended receiver incomplete. Trying to hit Tegan Rule out of the backfield. He was actually set up on the inside slot on that play. But I'll bring up a third and 12. 45 seconds played. The first possession of the game. Chandler Stevens with a third team all Ohio selection at defensive tackle number 44 in the 3 4 setup along with Landon Pedigo. And Leighton Schaefer, number five. Four wide this time, only receiver on this near side is the tight end, Xavier Mullins at 6'3", 220. Another big target for Ben Mast, who's being blitzed as they set up the screen. And it's there, but short of a first down, Tegan Rule brought down at just before the 30-yard line. Should be short. Leighton Schaefer got there as we've completed the first minute of the season. And they do mark it a yard short. And the Freddies are going for it. So an early gamble as the Freddies go to the I formation here. Mason Hoflick, the tailback behind Rule. Instead, Mass will take it himself. Big push by the offensive line. Gets him across the 35 for the first first down of the game for Fredericktown. Well, they'll spot him at the 35, but either way, four yards, or six yards on a fourth and one. That was a little bit of a problem for the, the, uh, for the Highland defense last season as they gave up. They only stopped 23 of 36 fourth down conversions last season. Gain of three on first down for Fredericktown. Taylor Stevens on the stop of the stop. That's Tegan Rule with that carry. So again, tight eye formation with Rule a whole flick in front of Rule. Rule will get it again. Up the middle. He's got a hole into the secondary. It's Tegan Rule down the sideline for Fredericktown. One man to beat. Touchdown, Freddies. 62 yards for Tegan Rule. Well, once he got through the line, there was nobody near him in a blue shirt. And it was just a matter of outrunning a couple of secondary players to the corner. Oh, 9.26 left and a Freddie strike first. Luke Vaughn to attempt, attempt the point. Luke Vaughn with the extra point out of mass hold. And it's blocked. Zach Schmidt got in there clean and blocked it. No return, though. If you recall, last year in the opener against Bloom Carroll, Highland blocked the field goal attempt, and Dane Nauman ran it back 92 yards for a touchdown. So the Freddie strike quickly. They go 81 yards. Uh, 80 yards officially. Eighty yards in just six plays. And again, 
Tegan Rule for 62 yards. Rule and Hofla combined for 191 yards and two touchdowns in last year's game. So now Veon will kick off. And it will be Zach Schmidt who just blocked that extra point and Hayden Klein back to return. Neither one of them returned a kickoff last season. The Scots will be going right to left, which is west to east here at Covert Stadium. Yes, the field is aligned east to west. East is to your left, west is to your right as you watch on your screen. So the Scots will have to fight from behind this year, or this tonight, in his first game. Vaon will squib it. Schmidt from the 20. And wrapped up. Big time hit by T by Mason Hoflick at the 31-yard line, and that's where the Scots will scrimmage for the first time this season. Scots will put in play his first attempt from there at Here come the Highlanders up front. It's Clayton Van Dyke, 76, Nick Smith, 55, Ethan Taylor, 79, Layden Hayes, 54, and Landon Pedigo, 51, left to right. And it looks like Colton Stover has an equipment problem of some kind. Eighty-one degrees at kickoff. What little wind there is is blowing from east to west, left to right. A little bit of humidity in the air. So here come the Fighting Scots, and they'll go three wide to start with. Nauman alongside Coulter, and predictably, it's Dane Nauman. Who gets pressure in the backfield, still able to get around the edge and gain a yard or two. Logan Small, safety, came over there to force him out of bounds, but good penetration from the Freddies up front to blow that play up and force Dane Nauman to go north and south, in this case north. So he gained two, so second and eight. Schmidt goes up to the top of your screen. Two wide out here in the pistol formation. Still well as the wing back. Nauman, little flea flicker. Sto Colton Stover with a throw. Left it a little bit short. Kane Carpenter broke it up, nearly intercepted. Trying to find Hayden Klein out here, but he underthrew it. Penalty flag back at the line of scrimmage. Joel Volpio is our referee tonight. Indeed, the penalty gets marked off against the Highlanders. Procedure call, not enough men on the line of scrimmage. And the Freddies will decline it and take the incomplete pass to bring up a third and eight. Highland pretty good on third downs last year, converting almost 42%. Three wide with Schaefer now as the wing back on the left side. Empty the backfield. A quick screen to Zach Schmidt. Schmidt finds some space. Schmidt into Freddie's territory, and Schmidt is going to take it the distance for a Highland touchdown. What a response from the Fighting Scots. 63 yards. So 
Colton Stover with his first touchdown pass on the varsity. He only threw seven passes all year. He actually nearly got his, a touchdown pass on his first varsity throw last season at Centerburg. Caleb Hunter, the honorable mention of Ohio selection, puts it through. He was 43 of 45 on points after last season. And he gets his first one of the year to put the Highlanders in the lead, 7-6. to six. So Zach Schmidt, responsible for not only blocking the extra point by Fredericktown, but also getting the Scots back on level terms. And then the extra point by Hunter puts Highland in front, 7-6. to six. What a start to this game. I mentioned both teams made it to the playoffs last season. Fredericktown went out in the first round, losing to Northmore 28-14. Highland easily dispatched Columbus' Linda McKinley in the first round last year before falling to Bloom Carroll in the second round, ending their season the same way they started, losing to the Bulldogs. And again, it's Carpenter and Small back to receive. Have to think there that Hunter has been instructed, don't kick it anywhere near the really tall kid down there. That number one is actually appropriate with his build at 6'5 and 200 pounds. 7-6, so the Fighting Scots lead is Hunter. He will indeed send it away to the far side. Tegan Rule, who scored the Freddies touchdown, has it. Has some room up the left side. Finally brought down at the 36-yard line. So a decent starting position for the Freddies. Owen oh, Stillwell and Cooper Young, young sophomore, making the tackle on special teams. Grant Hartley, the coach's son out here. He's a junior, he's number two in the slot inside of Carpenter with, again, a whole flick in front of Rule in the eye. And here comes Rule once again. Rule breaks free. Rule to into Scott's territory over the 50-yard line. A first down. Gain of 16. Tegan Rule already three carries, 81 yards. And we played three and a half minutes. Now they'll give it to Holflick, the up man. He's stuffed right at the line of scrimmage. Great surge by the defensive line, most notably Chandler Stevens, the third team All Ohio selection, number 44. 5'10, 195 pound senior. Making the big play there. They'll give him a yard. Now the shotgun. Play action to rule. Mass getting pressured. And Mass is sacked back at the 40-yard line. It's Landon Pedigo, the nose guard, 6'1", 220-pound senior. That will bring up third and 21 for the Freddies. And a big defensive play that the Scots needed. Again, Hartley will be inside of Carpenter on the far side. Rule will be inside of Xavier Mullins. Out here on this side, Mullins looking to set the screen. Said Mass is going long for Hartley, and Hartley has it at the 30 and pull out of bounds. About the 22-yard line, Zach Schmidt covering and saved the touchdown with that play, but a huge play for the Freddies to get out of a third and 21 hole. The 23-yard line, the Freddies knocking on the door. 
first snap they've had in the second snap they've had inside as Carpenter goes in a quarterback, takes the snap and gets forward for about three. Layden Hayes in on that tackle. Hayes at 6'1", 200. He's a junior coming up for his inside linebacker position. Thirty six yards on that pass from pass from Mass to Hartley. Six twenty two to go in the first quarter. Highland up seven to six. Rule again. Looking for room up the middle. Gets forward to about the fifteen yard line. Gavin Wigan, the sophomore, who also is doing the punting as well as playing inside linebacker, making that tackle. Six minutes to go, third and four coming up for the Freddies. Rule now with 85 yards. He'll get it again off the left side. Pulled down short of the first down, it looks like. Again, Wigand is there on the tackle along with Pedigo and coming up from the secondary run support is Hayden Klein, the cornerback. So fourth and one, Freddies went for it on their first possession and made it, led to a touchdown, and it looks like they're going to go for it again. 5-10 to go in the first quarter. Fighting Scott's up 7-6, to six. four wide. Hartley inside of Mast out here as Carpenter goes back into the quarterback position. And he started a quarterback last year when these two teams met. Carpenter's going to run for it. He has the first down. He has a lot more. But he fumbled the ball. But it looks like the Freddies have it. Lucas Herbst, the right tackle, number 64, jumped on it. Backed them up a couple of yards, but it's still... Good enough for a first and goal at the Highland 9. First and goal. Mass back to the quarterback spot as Carpenter goes outside of Hartley here on the near side. Rule one more time. Has some room. Breaks one tackle. Pull down inside the 5. Gavin DeBoard from his safety position making that tackle. So second and three with four, second and goal with 4.10 to go in this first quarter. Second goal. Hoflick, the up man, gets stood up right at the line. Good surge by the line to blow that play up. Aaron West, number 12 from his linebacker spot, making the play along with Clayton Van Dyke in there on the defensive line for a little more added size here. On now going up on third and goal. Third goal from the three. Tegan Rule now with 93 yards already. And he ran for 95 last season. And Fredericktown wants to talk this over. Will Hartley has an important third and goal here from the three, so he wants to make sure everybody's on the same page here. A Tegan Rule, 6'2", 185-pound junior, has been the big story here for the Freddies. Six carries for 93 yards. The big one, of course, the 62-yard touchdown run to open the scoring. Fredericktown already with 145 yards total offense. They've run the ball 13 times for 98 yards. Ladies and gentlemen, we complain about a lot of things. Ben Mast is two for three for 47 yards. The big play being the... The pass earlier to
third and goal. To Grant Hartley. So third and goal, and they'll change the formation a little bit with Carpenter alone out here on the near side. Rule alongside Mast in the backfield as Hoflick is a slot left with Hartley outside of him. It looks like Joe Volpio, our referee, needed a little hydration break there. 3.22 to go in the first quarter. 7-6 Highland. Block field, blocked extra point by Zach Schmidt. The difference, but the Freddies threatening. Mass looking for the slant in for Carpenter. Nearly intercepted. Zach Schmidt, his opposite number was there. He jumped the route. So now fourth down. And the Freddies are two for two going for it on fourth down tonight. And there's no sign of a field goal kicker coming out, so the Freddies will go for it once again. And third and fourth downs were a problem for this Highland defense last season. Carpenter now will go in at quarterback. Massed wide right with Trevor Bellman inside of him, and that's Bellman going in motion. They give fake it to him on a jet sweep. Carpenter doesn't get there. Well, the Highland defense finally rises up. Aaron West in on that stop for the Highlanders and the Fighting Scots will take over on downs. So 3-12 to go in the first quarter, and Highland get the first stop of the night. And now we'll have 98 yards to go, starting in their own two for their second possession. Uh, Colton Stover will go under center. Dane Nauman behind Chandler Stevens in the eye. Nauman gets a block on the outside, is able to spring it, turn to the corner. Dane Nauman up the sideline. The day trade has struck again. Dane Nauman is going to go 98 yards for a Highland touchdown. Give a lot of credit to Chandler Stevens, the lead blocker. He got the block that enabled, to, uh, enabled Nauman to get to the outside, and once he turned the corner, got past Trevor Bellman, and it was all over. Dane Norman had 12 50-plus yard runs for touchdowns last season. Five times he did it twice in a game. Against Cardington, he had three of those. So the Dane train got stuffed in his first series, but normal service on the Dane train has been restored. 98 yards. Zach Schmidt to hold. Gavin Wigan is the snapper. Good snap, good hold, good kick. 14-6 Highland. A lightning, another lightning strike from Dane Nauman, the junior. So Highland, two for two. Two possessions, two touchdowns, and a 14-6 lead. And again, the big block by Chandler Steven, uh, Stevens led the way and sprung number to the outside. Once he's able to turn that corner, there aren't too many guys in Division IV and keep up with him. So Caleb Hunter... 
will undoubtedly be kicking to the far side over towards Logan Small, number seven, or even Tegan Rule, number 19, who's set up over there. I'm not sure kicking to Rule's a great idea either, the way Rule's been playing. Rule with 93 yards on six carries. It is short. Rule is camped out under it. Rule. Tegan Rule gets by one man. Can't get by a couple more as he's out of bounds close to the 35-yard line. Cooper Young, a sophomore, number 33, making the tackle on special teams. So Fredericktown, which has been quite productive on offense here. 146 yards of total offense, 99 rushing, 47 passing. Again, out of the eye, it's Tegan Rule one more time. Gets forward for maybe a yard. Maybe oh, they'll give him two, actually, to the start. Had him snap from the 33. Landon Pedigo and Chandler Stevens making the tackle for, for the Scots. You see Ben Mast over there at far side getting his instructions and the next play call. And Carpenter wide out here to the near side with Logan Small inside of him. Mullins goes out to the left side. Mast. Mast has time looking over the middle for Carpenter. It's a little too tall even for the 6'5 senior. Short-armed it a little bit as there was traffic coming in the way of Gavin Wiggin, the inside linebacker. So a third and eight coming up here for Fredericktown. They've converted one of their first four third downs so far tonight. Trevor Bellman, who saw some time at quarterback in the second half of last year's game between these two teams, comes in. He'll go into the slot inside of Small. Carpenter by himself up at the top of your screen. Carpenter on the slant and has it at the 45. Good for a first down. And we can see why they decided to move Carpenter to a wide out position. Get him in space with that athletic ability and size that he has. Five first downs now for the Freddies. As they go three wide one more time out of the spread. Rule gets out of the backfield. They throw it to him, and it's intercepted. Intercepted, intercepted by the Highlanders. Penalty flags come in at the end of the play. Hayden Klein with the interception. The junior cornerback. At least one of the flags came in after the interception, so... We have a personal foul against Highland. But the foul was after the change of possession, so the Fighting Scots will retain possession. Here's Joe Volpio making the signal for the personal foul. So now back the Scots all the way up into their own territory to the 43-yard line to be exact. So Hayden Klein with the first interception of the season. That's an area where the defense excelled last year. 24 takeaways in 2021 to give the Fighting Scots a plus 12 in the turnover department. So basically they were a plus one every game. The Stover out of the spread set. Dane Nauman alongside him. Leighton Schaefer in motion from his wingback spot. Nauman will follow him. Schaefer got a good block, allowing Nauman to get into Freddie's territory close to the first down. Logan Small making the tackle, coming up from his cornerback position. Nine yards on the play for Nauman, so... 
I'll bring up a second one as Gavin DeBoer checks in with the next play. As we enter the final minute of the first quarter, Owen Stillwell will split wide to the right. Gavin DeBoer out here in the near side. Again, Schaefer moving from his wingback spot. And again, Nauman will follow him. This time getting great penetration, though, for the Freddies was Devon Witt, a sophomore linebacker. And that blew the play up. So third and five coming up. Third and six. Yeah, make that third and six actually. They'll spot him back at the 47-yard line. Isaiah Smith, who plays the splits time at left guard with Nick Smith coming off the field. Play clock uh, about to run out, as is the end of the first quarter. So that will do it for quarter number one, an exciting one. Four possessions, three touchdowns, two of them by Highland. The big run by Dane Nauman for 98 yards. Big plays all around. So it's 14-6 Highland after one quarter. And Tegan Rule opened the scoring just two and a half minutes in with a 62-yard touchdown run, but Zach Schmidt blocked the extra point. He then scored on the 63-yard pass and run. Less than a minute later to put the Fighting Scots back in front, uh, in front, I should say, after the successful extra point by Caleb Hunter. And then Dane Nauman, 98 yards, touchdown run after, after Highland's defense came up with a stop on fourth and goal from their own three-yard line. And Dane Nauman, four carries, 104 yards. He only failed to go over 100 yards once last season. That was the opener against Bloom Carroll. Tegan Rule, nine kids, seven carries, 94 yards for Fredericktown in the big 62-yard run, having a lot to do with that. So the Highlanders go left to right, east to west here in quarter number two, going into the sun which should help the wide receivers as they'll have the sun to their back when they look back into the backfield at, K, uh, at Colton Stover, the sophomore left-hander who also saw some time as the point guard on the varsity basketball team this past winter. And his vision is showing there. Quick slant in is complete to Gavin DeBoard. First down in Fredericktown territory at the 42-yard line. So Gavin DeBoard was a big part of the offense last year. They're depending on him as one of the few experienced wideouts that they have. Toby Rogers, a sophomore, goes wide to the left as the Scots go trips here to this side. Bobbled snap, but he, Colton Stover still gets into Nauman, and he still gets forward for a gain of about seven, maybe eight. Well, they'll give him seven to the 35-yard line. Zach Schmidt comes in with the next play from Ty Stover, who relays it to Colton Stover. Caden Reitenbach, a, uh, also a sophomore, out here wide on the near side. Stover sends Leighton Schaefer in motion from his wingback position, and again, Norman will follow Schaefer. Dane has to bounce it to the outside, but he has some space out there. Dane Norman breaks it in to inside the 25 to the 22-yard line. Logan Small, the safety, had to make the tackle, but another first down for the Fighting Scots and another good run for Dane Norman. And Norman averaged... Averaged 211 yards per game last season. Had three... Three games of 300, two games of 300 plus yards. Last year against Fredericktown, 13 carries for 289 yards in three touchdowns, and he didn't even play in the fourth quarter. At that point, Highland were up 34 to six. 
Here comes Nauman again to the inside. Grabbed at the line of scrimmage. He's still able to push forward for about three. Xavier Mullins from his defensive end spot crashed inside and made first contact. Mullins is tough to get rid of once he grabs a hold of you. 6'3", 220-pound senior. And again, Toby Rogers comes in with the next play, replacing Zach Schmidt. We'll see a lot of rotation at the wide receiver spot as well. Schmidt and DeBoard played considerably last year and got a lot of targets and receptions, but a little experience the rest of the way out as the Scots will go four wide with three out here to the near side. And a high snap is going to force Stover all the way back to his 40-yard line to fall on the ball. He might not have gotten it. It looks like the Freddies have it. And they do. Carter Moe, the outside linebacker, with the recovery. Only a sophomore comes up to play in the first turnover for the Highlanders this year. So for the first time tonight, the Scots failed to score on a possession, so the defense will be tested once again. Ben Mass, the quarterback, three of seven for 60 yards and the interception out of the eye. He'll go give it to Tegan Rule, who breaks free again. Tegan Rule into Highland territory inside the 40 to the 37-yard line. And Dane Norman will have to come out as he lost his helmet there. He'll have to come out for one play while making that. He lost it while making the tackle, but that's the rule that was implemented a couple years ago. Timeout, Highland. And now the Scots will call a timeout. And this is something we saw from Ty Stover last season, these basketball-type timeouts to try to slow down the momentum. Seventeen yards by Tegan Rule on that last run. He's now at 111 yards on only eight carries, and that 62 yards touchdown run to open the scoring. So Carpenter comes out here to the near side with Hartley inside of him. And again, the I formation, Hoflick in front of Rule, who gets the call again. And Rule with another opening on that right side, down to the 22-yard line. Gain of about 15. But Tegan Rule running wild so far tonight for Fredericktown. Gavin DeBoard, on the stop. First and 10. Gavin DeBoard getting there to make the tackle. 17 yards officially now on that run. So he rule now has 128 yards on 12 carries and nine carries. Rule one more time. Gets stood up at the line by Stevens, but he got dodges that tackle. Gets forward for about four yards. Landon Pedigo finally brings him down. Eight forty to go in the second quarter. Highland up fourteen to six. I'm Keith Kokinda. Glad you could join us here on Above the Light Productions. Be a few weeks before we come back here as Highland will play the next three games on the road. Again, Carpenter out here on this side, but it's going to be Tegan Rule one more time. He's hit at the line but by Dane Nauman, but he still gets forward for a few. Highland will visit Triway, Crestview, and Ontario before coming back to take on Marion Pleasant on September 16. Third and three with 7.55 to go in the second quarter. Fredericktown, two of five on third downs tonight. 
four wide. Hartley with Mast outside of him as Carpenter goes in a quarterback. Rule in motion. They fake the jet sweep to him. To this side, the pass is short, looking for Xavier Mullins on the flanker screen. So that will bring a fourth down. The Freddies two of three on fourth downs. They missed their last try. And they're definitely going for it again. Baseline on the coverage for the Scots. Trevor Bellman comes in. I thought and Ben Mast now brings in the play. And Trevor Bellman, number 20, did play some quarterback last year. And, of course, Carpenter as well. He'll go outside with Bellman and Hartley inside of him. Whole flick win in the backfield with Mast. Mast looking for Mullins, and the pass is too high incomplete. So for the second straight possession, the Scots come up with a fourth down stop. And Ty Stover is very happy with his defense for making that play. Colton Stover, efficient passing so far. Three of four for 49 yards and the touchdown. And the reason for the 49 yards is because the, the sack earlier in the fumble takes away from the passing stats rather than the running stats. Day number with seven carries, 127 yards, albeit 98 of them on the touchdown run in the first quarter. Zach Schmidt with three catches for 49 Having for 49 yards, all that touchdown was for 63. Here goes Dane Nauman once again, looking for room to the outside. Got a block from his wideout. Breaks a tackle by Logan Small. Caden Reichenbach got a good block there on Cade Carpenter, who was looking for a holding call, but it's a first down for Highland. First down. Ball on Highland 39. So Dane Nauman is at it again. He's starting to find it here. Three wide for the Scott Schaefer, the H back on the wing on the right side. Stover on the move, and again, he's left handed. Finding Schaefer incomplete through his hands. Logan Small there defensively for the Fredericktown. Stover now three of five passing. 22 yards for Norman on that last run. So he now has 149 yards rushing. Two teams even on total offense. 199 yards for Fredericktown, 198 for Highland. Fredericktown, the majority of possession, which they had last year's game too but they're still trailing. Now here's Nauman into the secondary again. Tay Nauman into Fredericktown territory, and it's only Carter Mull that prevents a touchdown. Well, Fredericktown saw this movie last year and didn't like it. Again, he ran for 289 yards in just three quarters in the game this past October. Twenty-four yards on that run. Zach Schmidt alone to the top of your screen. Whistle and uh, timeout called as the play clock ran out. So that's the second timeout called by Highland with six seventeen to go in the second quarter, and the Scots with a fourteen to six lead, looking for more. Timeout, They fans are about six minutes and 17 seconds away from two great Even time of possession, Music to just over four and a half minutes for Highland, 12 minutes for Fredericktown. But that's what happened last year. Fredericktown, over 31 minutes of possession last okay, season, only 16 minutes of possession field. for Highland. Well, that's good concession 
Fan was a big factor is two tur- two interceptions by Highland made a big difference along with all the the big plays. But that was a big, uh, but that's one of those where the time of possession stat is not a good indicator of how a game is going. Let's give a shout out to Larrison Services, Big Walnut, Lake, Ohio Storm Fire District that are here this evening. Thanks for your service to our community as always. And Rule ran for 95 yards on 11 carries in last year's game. Today, same number of carries, but 133. Good run up the right side. This is Court Sears, Court Sears. the sophomore, another varsity basketball player. And he's close, got eight yards on first down. The offensive coordinators love this, a second and two. And Matt Downing can dial up just about anything he wants here from the Fredericktown 29-yard line as the Scots look to add to their 14-6 to six lead, six minutes to go in quarter number two. Toby Rogers goes wide with Hayden Klein inside of him up on the far side at the top of your screen. Caden Reichenbach here on the near side, but again, it's going to be Court Sears. This time, he's stuffed at the line of scrimmage, brought down by Trevor Bellman. Trevor Bellman, number 20 on the stop for the Freddies. Well, marking back at the line of sc- at the 29 again, so no gain for Sears. We'll bring up a third and two, 525 left as Gavin DeBoer brings in the play. Island looking to make it three touchdowns in four possessions. Chandler Stevens in at the H-back spot now. He alternates with Schaefer. Here comes Nauman. Gets a man to miss. Drags another player forward. Still pushing to the 20-yard line. Good for another Highland first down. Well, he made a great move to make Braden Sapp, the inside linebacker, go one way while he went the other inside of him. Eight yards on that last play for Dane Nauman. Nauman's now up to 181 yards on 10 carries. Again, Stevens as the H back as the uh, Scots go three wide. Now Stevens sent in motion. Whistle prior to the snap as a flag flies in. And the play clock ran out, so the time count violation will cost Highland five yards. Delay game, Highland. That was a big problem in last year's game for Highland. Last year, Highland was penalized 15 times for 156 yards. And another flag flies in. And... And offside against the Fredericktown Freddy, so they get the five yards right back. And again, the high school is different. Once a player violates the neutral zone, the flag is thrown, the play is blown dead. They can't get back as they can in college or professional ball. So back to where we started. First and 10, 4.14 to go in the second quarter. A little fake to the outside. Then Mark Mason Hoflick with a great tackle behind the line on Dane Norman, who barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. Hopefully coming up from his inside linebacker position, a 6'2", 190-pound senior. So second and 10, 3.53 to go in the quarter. At the 21-yard line, again, trips to the far side with Zach Schmidt wide. Stevens and Klein inside of him. Stover looking inside. The other way, though, right back and it's... Nearly intercepted after it was broken up by Cade Carpenter, who got the right hand in there to tip that pass away. 
that long reach of his. Runs it by the intended receiver, number 22. Stover now three of six passing. Third and ten. Three thirty-four left in the third. Highland still up fourteen to six, looking to add to it here. In the last moments of this third or second quarter, Nauman alongside of Stover, looking this near side for the screen pass. It's complete to the board, makes one man miss, but Small makes the tackle. For no gate, and that will bring out the field goal unit. And Caleb Hunter, five of nine on field goals last year, as long as was 34 against Centerburg, scored 58 points. And again, all Ohio honorable mention, Division Four. 38 yards on this attempt, though, with Zach Schmidt holding. Good hold by Schmidt to get it down. That kick is easily good, so Caleb Hunter, his first field goal of the season for 37 yards, stretches the lead to 17 to six. The Highland four possessions, two touchdowns and a field goal. And their lead is 17 to six now. Dane Nauman, again, 100, 11 carries, 181 yards. Maybe if you take away that touchdown run, 98 yards, that's 10 carries, 83 yards. That's over eight yards a carry. And he averaged, although that's down, last year he averaged over nine and a half with 2,532 yards on 262 carries and 24 touchdowns. Again, Carpenter and Small are back deep, and uh, Hunter will undoubtedly be kicking over here to the near side toward Logan Small. All the Teagan rules up in front of him. He's returned the last two kickoffs, and he's been... Terrific as a running back as well. A little more of a drive. This one will be taken by Small back at the nine. Small gets to the 25 and brought down there. So Fredericktown will scrimmage there with 2.38 to go until halftime. They have two timeouts. And we've seen them strike quickly, both with the passing game and the running game. And Ben Mast only three of nine for 60 yards. Tegan Rule, 11 carries, 133 yards and a touchdown. Play action to Hoflick. Carpenter, a quarterback, will keep it. Gets forward for a yard, maybe two. That's his... Seventh carry now has 18 yards rushing. Aaron West, number 12 in your program on a tackle. And Carpenter ran 19 times for only 27 yards in last year's game as the sun is finally set here in north central Ohio. New lights here at uh, Covert Field Stadium, by the way. Here comes Tegan Rule again. Ooh. Pushes forward for a gain of four, maybe five yards on the play. Chandler Stevens making the tackle for Highland. Chandler Stevens, number 44 on his stop. We'll give him six on that play, so third and, or give him five on that play, so third and four coming up for Fredericktown. Three, third down, four to go. And the Fredericktown, 31. Freddie's now two of six on third down. They convert two of their first three. Again, out of the eye, it's Tegan Rule. Oh, Rule turn. pushes forward very close to the first down. Layden Hayes on the tackle. Now they'll mark him short, about a half a yard. Layden Hayes, number 54, Aaron Go West. Aaron West also in on that tackle. Fourth is 
Jake Law Jake checks Law. in. Count here. Actually, Clay four. Clayton Van Dyke checks in the junior at 6'3", 240. And again, the Freddies go for it. Mast will take it himself. Looks like he has the first down. Mast and he does indeed have it. So Fredericktown now three of five on fourth down conversions tonight. After they missed, the, they made their first two, missed their last two, and now get this one to keep the drive going in the final minute. 45 seconds to go to be exact. Gain of about two yards on that play by Tegan Rule. Layden Hayes making the tackle, and Fredericktown will now call their second timeout with 39 seconds left. And Skyler Kokinda and Travis Reese taking care of all the technical aspects. I'm Keith Kokinda. Glad you could join us here again on Above the Light, Light Productions. And again, a reminder, Highland won't be back for three weeks. September 16th, they'll be back home here to take on Mary and Pleasant. And they'll have to go to Triway, Crestview, and Ontario over the next three weeks. The game against Ontario will be the first league game of the season as the Scots return to the Mid-Ohio Athletic Conference, of which they were a charter member back in 1990. So second and eight coming up here from the 38. Xavier Mullins out wide here to the near side with Mason Hoflick inside of him. Mass looking this way, trying for Mullins again and throw just out of his reach. That's last three times they've targeted Mullins. Yeah, they haven't been able to make a connection. Mass now three of 10 passing. Third down with 35 seconds left. And again, it's Bellman inside of Mullins out here in the near side is Mast getting some pressure and he's sacked back at the 25 yard line. It's Day Nauman who's doing it all. Fourth and 21 coming up. Well, they have to make it more like 18. 28 seconds left. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention this, of course, even though obviously he was most known for baseball, but the late great Vince Scully was also tremendous on football as well. I remember he was the one who called the catch for CBS Sports, the 1981 NFC Championship game, the game that launched the 49ers dynasty. And on a personal note, one of my heroes, and certainly as far as I'm concerned, the best who ever did what I do here. And I've told many people since then, if somebody were to tell me I'm one quarter as good at play-by-play -of, -play of Vince Scully, I would consider that high praise. So I wanted to make sure I got that mention in here. So for the first time tonight, we're going to see a punt. Xavier. Zach Schmidt back to receive it for Highland. He's standing inside his 45. Zach Xavier Mullins handles the punting as we have a whistle and a snafu at the snap. And it'll be a procedure call going against the Freddies. So that'll back them up even further. And Highlander out of timeouts, only 30 seconds left. Have to think it's just going to be take a knee and take this 17 to 6 lead to the locker room for the intermission. Although Highland looking up like looking up, uh, lining it up like they want to block this one. And they're backing out. They're coming after it, all right. Mullins gets it away, but it's a short one. Got a slightly favorable roll. So down to the 44-yard line is where the Highlanders will scrimmage. Also a mention I'd like to bring up, of course, we've seen Highland, you see Highland the huddle, they use that old Kansas City Chiefs uh, stack huddle that Hank Stram brought in when he took over. He took the job with the Dallas Texans, later the Kansas City Chiefs. Unfortunately, as you may have heard, their 
Hall of Fame quarterback Len Dawson was admitted to hospice care the beginning of this week. We certainly want to send along our prayers and best wishes to him, his wife Linda, and their children. It was gratifying to read a story uh, on uh, the Kansas City Fox affiliate where Patrick Mahomes, the current quarterback, who's a terrific player, uh, had a lot of great uh, respectable, respectable, respectful things to say about Dawson and what he did for that Kansas City franchise and making the Chiefs really what they became and are today. Probably no person in the history of that franchise more important than him other than the founder and original owner, Lamar Hunt. So that will do it. Halftime here at Fishburne Family Field at Covert Stadium. And after a shaky start, the defense showing some issues here. We're trying to stop the run, but they have a 17-6 lead due to the Highland Fighting Scots as we go to halftime. We'll take a break. You can enjoy both bands here at halftime. Be back in about 20 minutes or so for the second half here on Above the Light Productions. Ladies and gentlemen, under the direction of Andrew Hollenbaugh, Jessica Overholt, and led by our field commanders, Abby Kraft and Anna Krause, we proudly present to you the Fredericktown High School Marching Band! Tonight, we are thrilled to bring you back to the 80s with this classic rock anthem by Journey. Hold on to that feeling, and don't. Stop believing!
chart will take you a little further back, all the way into the 70s, with this really huge hit by Swedish band ABBA. Here's our rendition of Dancing Queen. don't know what I'm to say. I'll say it anyway. Join us as we play Take On Me.
Led on the field by Heather Condren, Jocelyn Garcia, and Megan Decker, and under the direction of Amy Arnett and Heather Faulkner, tonight's show is filled with Highland Scott fan favorites, including Wilson Pickett, Land of a Thousand Dances, and John Higgins composed Ohio U's Ain't Been Good. When I mention Scott fan favorites, you knew this one would be on the list. Climb aboard with the Doobie Brothers for Long Train Running!
round of applause for the Pride of Ireland, the Highland Marching Band. The band will begin its quest for a repeat OMEA Marching Band State Finals on September 10th in their first competition at Cloverleaf. Good luck, band, and go Scots! Welcome back to Fishburn Family Field at Covert Stadium here in Sparta, Ohio at Highland High School. Opening week of the Ohio High School football season for 2022. It's the Highland Fighting Scots 17-6 over the Fredericktown Freddies. I'm Keith Kokinda. I have Travis Reese and Skyler Kokinda taking care of all the technical aspects of tonight's game. Well, it started out uh, pretty quickly for Fredericktown. First possession. Tegan Rule ran for a 62 yards touchdown, but the extra point was blocked by Zach Schmidt, keeping the lead at 6 0. That was just two and a half minutes into the game. And then just 42 playing seconds later, Colton Stover completed his first varsity touchdown pass to Zach Schmidt for 63 yards, and the extra point. Gave Highland the lead at 7-6, and they haven't looked back on it since. Late in the first quarter, Dane Nauman, back to his usual self, ran 98 yards for a touchdown, sprung by a great block on the outside by Chandler Stevens, leading the way from the fullback position to make it 14-6. And then the second quarter, late in the second quarter, Caleb Hunter in his first field goal of the year, his longest uh, in the, on the varsity for 37 yards out. So third, actually, they're officially critting his 38 yards out, so that made it 17 to 6. That's where we stand. The big key to that first touchdown by Dane Nauman was uh, a fourth and goal stop from the three yard line by the by the Highland defense. First stop they had on a fourth down. The Freddies had converted their previous two fourth down tries before that. Colton Stover, four of seven, passing for 49 yards. 
and the one touchdown pass. Well, ben Mass for Fredericktown, three of ten for 60 yards. He also threw an interception. Both teams have a takeaway. Tegan Rule, 14 carries, 143 yards, including that touchdown in the first quarter. To open the scoring. Dane Nauman, 11 carries, 181 yards, and his touchdown. But even taking away, the, he had 98 yards run, 83 yards on just 10 carries. That's eight over eight yards per carry. Zach Schmidt leading the way through three catches including that touchdown reception. Highland will go left to right, east to west here in the third quarter. As dark, this is beginning to settle here in north central Ohio. Luke Veon to kick it away. To Zach Schmidt and Aiden Klein. He'll send it along the ground where Schmidt will pick it up at the 19. Hurdles the man at the 35 and has stood up there. Number 23, Logan Hansen on a stop for Fredericktown. Logan Hansen making the tackle there for the Freddies. Back up tight end, 6'1", 165 pound senior. So Colton Stover will bring the Fredericktown off uh, the Highland offense out. And the Fighting Scots will scrimmage from their 36 to begin the third quarter. And with a 17 to six lead, as Hayden Klein goes wide out to the left side. And we have whistles before the snap. And apparently the play clock wasn't reset right after the kickoff return. Zach Schmidt alone out here on the near side, just visible in the bottom left corner of your screen. And Dane Nauman back in that I formation and he'll get it to start the third quarter, able to break one tackle, gets across the 40. Gain of five, maybe six yards for the junior. He was first team all Ohio in division four last season with over 2,500 yards rushing and 24 touchdowns. 12 of which were 50, were for 50 plus yards. Six yards on the play for Norman, that takes him to 187. So a second and four. Klein comes out here to the near side this time. And again, it's Chandler Stevens in front of Nauman in that short eye formation. Stevens will get the call. He'll get a first down to midfield and more. But he fumbles the ball, was stripped away from him and recovered by Tegan Rule for the Fredericktown Freddies. Second turnover for Highland. Fumble on the play, recovered by Tegan Rule, number 19. Boy, a big run by Chandler Stevens, but he had the ball ripped out of his hands. As I mentioned in the first half, Highland was very good at taking care of the football. They only had 12 turnovers all season in 2021 and took it away 24 times. But they're a minus one tonight here. Cade Carpenter will go out wide to the right with Grant Hartley inside of him. Hartley had a, a big catch in that first quarter. Here's Rule with his first carry of the second half. That'll take him to 146 yards on an A as he gains three. Carpenter, Hartley, and Rule all with one catch each. Here's Hartley's catch of 36 yards. It was a big play in the first quarter. Now Carpenter looks like he'll line up as the quarterback. His mask goes wide to the right with Rule inside of him. Carpenter will Carpenter keep it. Keeps. Carpenter up the middle. Looks like he has the first down. He's a tremendous athlete. Will, will Hartley wants to get the ball in his hands as much as possible. Again, he played most of the year as a quarterback last season before, before Mass took over toward the end. Mast only was 28 of 60 last season. Here comes Rule once again on first down. Pulls his way out of one tackle, gets himself forward for a gate of five, maybe six, although they'll give him five. Hayes on a 
Layden Hayes making the tackle for Highland. But rule good for five yards there. Rule now 15 carries, 146 yards. And Rule is alongside Carpenter back in at the quarterback spot. No, actually, it's Hoflick as Carpenter will follow Hoflick off the right side, but he's grabbed and brought down maybe a yard gain. They're going to say he's down. I was looking for those orange bags to fly out, but they didn't. Leighton Schaefer coming in to make that tackle for Highland. So no gain. No That'll make it third. third and three, or third and five. Five yards to go. For the Highland, 48. Ninth carry for Carpenter. He only has 25 yards, though. Freddies will send three out here to the near side. Mast back in to take the snap. Looking this way to Mast rule out of the backfield, but over his head and behind him. Not a good throw by Mast, who's now three of 11 throwing. And that'll bring up a fourth down. Freddies three of six on third downs in the first half. Fourth and five. But it looks like this time they will send out the punting team. Well, no, they won't. They just made some wholesale offensive changes. Look, no, it is that is indeed Xavier Mullins now back to punt. Zach Schmidt and Hayden Klein back to receive. They're standing at about their 20. Low line drive kick. Zach Schmidt will let it roll. It takes a favorable Fredericktown roll inside the 10-yard line. It didn't look pretty, but this is not figure skating or gymnastics. There are no points for artistic impression. So the Scots with their worst starting position of the night back at their own five-yard line, their second worst, I should say. They started their two after stopping that fourth down in the first quarter. Of course, it only took a one play to get out of that hole. Dane Nauman going 98 yards. Thank you for what you do and did so we can play high school football in Central Ohio and, as a matter of fact, all the way country on a Friday night. Thank you very much for your service and your family service. So it'll be Schaefer in front of Nauman now in the I formation. And here comes Nauman following Schaefer, gets by a linebacker across the 10 to the 12, so a gain of seven. Mason Hoflick, on a stop number Mason Hoflick making the tackle on defense there. Nauman was able to power right past Xavier Mullins who came up from his defensive end position. I'll give Norman six on the place, a second and four. Here he comes again. Tries the opposite side, Norman. able to break out of a tackle. Tries to get past Small, and he does. And he's looks like he has the first down as he tried to run over a player who's still down. Looks like he uh, holding his right knee. That's uh, Travis Small. Gets up hobbling as he took a shot from Norman, who lowered his shoulder and put it right in his chest. Looks like he may have twisted a knee or an ankle on his way down, but it's good for a first down. First down, Highland from there, 16. Again, six yards for Norman. He's now at 200 yards on 14 carries. Court Sears alone here out on the near side, out of your picture right now. Again, out of the eye, it's Dane Nauman. Gets grabbed in the backfield and dropped for a loss. Lucas Herps, the 250-pound senior defensive tackle, making the play. Lost a yard on the play. Second and 11. Uh, they give him a one-yard loss, so second and 11 coming up for the Scots. 7.40 to go in quarter number three, 17-6 lead for Highland. Zach Schmidt, a touchdown pass reception for Colton Stover, which was preceded by a 98 yards touchdown run by Dane Nauman. The lights are on. New lights installed here at Coverett Stadium this season. Zach Schmidt just out of your picture to the right of the formation. 
court sears to the left and oh, colton stover says something's wrong here and calls timeout nice work tonight by the highland student section with the splatter park theme Good splatter park is the theme for the student section which is off to the left you can see them on the left edge of your screen there by the goal post students all have them there Shirts and their shorts and their bodies painted with uh, splatter paint, hand prints, all kinds of things. Highland have now outgained Fredericktown 267 to 217, in spite of the fact that Fredericktown have run 40 plays, Highland only 25, and the time of possession favors Fredericktown at 1652 to 1022. So second and 11 at the 15. Chandler Stevens goes into the fullback spot in front of Dane Nauman. Hayden Klein there in the left of your screen in the slot. Stover coming this way. Has some time. Throws long and way over the head of Caden Reichenbach. Which is probably a smart play by Stover to throw it over everybody's head because Reichenbach had both... Uh, Logan Small and Trevor Bellman closing in on him. So third and 11 with seven minutes, nine seconds to go. Highland three of four on third downs, but this is a difficult one. Although Fredericktown did hit a third and 21 in the first half. Over now four of eight passing with the one touchdown. Nauman one more time. Gets away from Mullins. Nauman has some space. Upended at the 20 by Small. That'll be well short. So for the first time this season, Highland have to punt. Lucas Hurst. Gavin Wigan will be doing the punting now. Tegan Rule and Cade Carpenter back for Fredericktown. Should get excellent field position out of this. But they get a good roll due to the Scots and down there by Hayden Klein at the 40. Ball is down at the Fredericktown 39. Will they put it in play first and 10? 624 to go in the third quarter. Still Highland 17-6. I'm Keith Kokinda. Glad you could join us here on Above the Light Productions with Travis Reese and Skyler Kokinda taking care of all the technical duties, giving you the, the great pictures and sound we have. Ben Mass, 3 of 10, 3 of 11 passing for 60 yards and an interception. And then Grant Hartley wide to the right. And that's Tegan Rule in motion. They fake it to him. Mass will take it across the 40 where he's grabbed for about a yard gain. Party Mass on the carry, number three. Chandler Stevens, is Chandler Stevens got there first with Layden Hayes helping out. So two yards gained for. Mast, still in the negative category for rushing yards tonight due to that sack that Dane Norman came up with late in the second quarter. A little confusion on the formation as Carter Mulls on the wrong side. Now he'll come out here outside of Mason Hofa, or I should say Trevor Ballman, who will go in motion, take the jet sweep. I look the throw. He's played some quarterback. That's a high-hanging throw and a terrific catch by Hartley. If they say he got a foot down, and he did. Great adjustment by Grant Hartley to catch that wounded duck. Again, Ballman did play quarterback some in last year's game between these two teams, but that was a floater. I don't think Zach Schmidt ever saw where the ball was. But a terrific adjustment again by Hartley to make the catch and get the first down for Fredericktown. Top 
Five and a half minutes left in this third quarter. Carpenter will come outside here with Hartley in the slot. Rule behind Hoflick in the eye. Here comes Tegan Rule once again, but he's grabbed in the backfield. Chandler Stevens, third team All-Ohio selection last season, makes a big defensive play. That pass was good for 20 yards, but now a loss of two gives the Freddy second and 12 with 5-10 left in the third and trailing 17 to six. Mullins, who's missed the last three throws they've made to him there at the bottom of your screen with rule inside of him. Mass is looking to the right, though the long throw down the sideline for Kate Carpenter. He couldn't pull it in. Gavin DeBoard back there cover, coming over to help out from his safety position to help out Matt Scarberry, the cornerback on that side. So that'll bring up a third and 12. And that matches uh, Ben Mass passing, three of 12. Mason Hopex only had one carry tonight, and he, he had 95 yards rushing and a touchdown in last year's game between these two teams. Mast getting pressured, throwing for Tegan. Wool, it's broken up by Matt Scarberry, the senior cornerback. Center receiver Xavier Mullins, number 11. Matt Scarberry, number three on the coverage for Highland. So Highland now stopped eight of 10 third down conversion attempts by Fredericktown, and it forced another punt. Uh, Mullins' last punt was down at the five after he got quite a nice roll. And then it's Klein and Schmidt back to receive. Goes over their heads, and that time the favorable roll, not so favorable, taking the ball into the end zone for the touchback. Will take over first and ten at the twenty yard line. So Dane Nauman now with sixteen carries, two hundred six yards. I have a feeling he'll get a few more here in this third quarter at least. And one of the questions was the offensive line with placing two starters so far. You have to say they've done their job. So clear the way for Nauman. Only the one sack allowed. That's Zach Schmidt up in the top right corner of your screen. Stover to Nauman. Gets grabbed at the line of scrimmage, still pushing forward. Nauman on the carry. Lucas Herbst, number 64, 21. Mason Hoflick. Luke Veon and Lucas Herbst making the tackle for the Freddies. Run good for three yards. That's 209 yards now for the Dane train. Four minutes, five seconds to go in the third quarter. Again, Schmidt out wide to the far side. Stover looking that way. Stover throwing into some traffic incomplete in and out of the hands of the H-back Owen Stillwell. First time they've thrown to him tonight, I believe. Stover now four of nine passing. Highland three of five on third downs tonight. Facing a third and six here with 354 left in the third. Court Sears just out of your picture on the right side by himself. Nauman again, grabbed from behind and pulled down well short of the first down. And again, it's Lucas Herbst getting the penetration and making the tackle, forcing a fourth down, and Highland sends in the punt team, Gavin Wiggins, to kick it away. 
for the Braves. Fourth and three, punt formation for the Scots. Wiggins first punt went 38 yards. This one looks like it'll go a little bit farther. Tegan Rule has it, makes the first man miss, and dances out the 45-yard line of Highland. Tegan Rule on so return. the Freddies will scrimmage in plus territory. Out of bounds by Chandler Trailing 17-6 with 3.13 to go. First attempt, Frederick count for the Scots, 48. Since the first quarter, the Fredericktown offense has been well stifled. Mast has not been doing well in the passing game. Mast has missed his last four passes. Here goes Ballman, who threw the completion in the last drive. He stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Leighton Schaefer getting there first, number five. Schaefer's younger brother, Lincoln, a freshman on the team this year. 2.50 to go in quarter number three. Second and 10 coming up for the Freddies. Carpenter goes wide to the right. Logan Small now in a wide out inside of him along with Ballman. As Mullen sets up alone on this near side. Mast looking. Mast being chased by Stevens. Now has to throw it away into the bench. Third and 10. And the Scots 43. Mass has now missed his last six throws. Third and 10, 243 left. Small will now go wide to the right. And they'll put Carpenter in the slot with Ballman out here on the near side. Mass getting some pressure, gets it away. Did he make that catch? He sure did at the 20 yard line. Logan's uh, Kate Carpenter. A little slow to get up, but Carpenter nice catch by makes Carpenter, the catch. That's his second yeah, of the night. And the for the Scots. First and ten, Frederick Townsend, Highland 20. So a big third down conversion for the Freddies to keep this drive going with 2.10 left in the third. And small and a mull out here to the near side. Hulf look in front of Ballman now. Ballman gets the carry. He's drilled at the line of scrimmage. Good penetration by Layden Hayes from his defensive end spot. No gain on that play. Layden Hayes and Dane Norman go by to stop him for no gain. Second and 10, Fredericktown. That third down pass was good for 23 yards from Mass to Carpenter. And I see Mass checking back in with the next play. Small going out wide with Mullins, the tight end on the right side. Carpenter out here by himself. Now Rule is back in a tailback behind Hoflick, and he'll get the call. Has some room down to the 10. Has a first down near the five-yard line. Zach Schmidt and Chandler Stevens making the tackle. Tegan Rule brought down by but 16 Jackson. yards for Tegan Rule. Rule now 18 carries, 166 yards. And again, it's Rule behind Hoflick in the eye. He'll get it again. Nauman grabbed him at the line. He pushes forward for two yards, it looks like. Yeah, three. Second and goal. Frederick down from the Scots, four. 19 carries, 164 yards for Tegan Rule, the junior running back.
Fredericktown trying to cut into this 17 to 6 deficit here in the final 20 seconds of the third quarter. Play clock and game clock both at 11. It's Mason Hoflick, the fullback, driving forward, gets near the goal line, but he's short That's to the one yard line. So we'll have to go to the other end to see what happens. Aaron West making the tackle, but also Clayton Van Dyke has to come out now because he's lost his helmet. So he will miss this third and goal play that will be at the other end as we reach the end of the third quarter. 17 to six after a scoreless third quarter. The Highland Fighting Scots still leading the Fredericktown Freddies. But once again, the big story, Dane Nauman, the junior, 18 carries, 213 yards, and a touchdown of 98 yards back in the first quarter. Tegan Rule, 19 carries, 165 yards for Fredericktown. He also has a touchdown, 62 yards to open the scoring tonight. Offensive numbers just about even, 282 yards for Highland, 279 for Fredericktown. 233 of those Highland yards have been on the ground, 176 rushing yards for Fredericktown. Freddy's a three of 11 on third downs, which they're facing right here. Only a four, a three and a half minutes difference in terms of time possession favoring Fredericktown. Mast with the push himself, trying to get the touchdown on the quarterback sneak, he didn't get it. And I'm a little surprised with that call. I would think if they were going to run a quarterback sneak, Cade Carpenter might be a better option at 6'5". So fourth down for the Freddies. They're three of six on fourth downs. They made their first two, one of four since then. Another big stand coming for Highland here. Hoflick in front of Rule in the eye. Rule will get the call, and Rule will get the touchdown for Fredericktown. Deegan Rule is second of the night. Now the question is, does Will Hartley go for two? Because that would get them within a field goal. Remember, they had their first extra point blocked by Zach Schmidt. And indeed, the Freddies will go for the two-point convert here. Trying to cut this deficit to three. Carpenter wide to the left with Hartley inside of him. Again, it's Hoflick in front of Rule in the backfield. Mullins the tight end to the right side. They'll look for him. Mass will have some room, though. He'll tuck it away himself and run it in for the two-point convert to bring the Freddies within three. Well, Fredericktown's offense comes up with a couple of good big plays here to start the fourth quarter, and 46 seconds in, it's only a three-point lead for the Highlanders at 17-14. Zach Schmidt and Hayden Klein back to return. Zach Schmidt, two returns 
averaging 16 in return. Luke Veon, the senior, to kick it away. So a big series coming up here for the Fighting Scots as their lead has been cut to three after the touchdown and the two-point convert. Good bounce for Zach Schmidt from the 20. About 18, 19 yards on that return. 39-yard line. Good field position. Elijah Rausch, a sophomore running back and linebacker, making the tackle. As I mentioned, Dane Nauman, 18 for 213 and a touchdown. Colton Stover, four passes uh, completed out of nine with a touchdown to Zach Schmidt. And he only threw seven passes all last season in two appearances. But from the 40, Nauman alongside Stover. Nauman will get the call. Nauman has room off the right side, gains five or six yards, maybe seven. Devon Witt, a sophomore, in on that tackle for Fredericktown along with Xavier Mullins. So seven yards for Nauman on first down. That's a big first play of the drive to get seven. 10.35 left in regulation. Again out of the spread. Nauman has a crease and stumbled, maybe tripped. I'm not sure which, but he had a crease and he hit it in a hurry. And that's one of the things that distinguish him, him as a running back is the ability to see that opening and hit it. And there were times last year I thought for sure he saw where the crease was going to be before it even opened up. But another six yards and good for another first down as Caden Reichenbach brings in the next play. Well, we've lost the play clock down at the right side of the field. However, we're still working on the left side, which is where the Scots are driving to. Here comes Nauman. Ballman grabs him, but Nauman drags him forward for a gain of five. Well, he has great leg strength and leg drive. So another five yards gain. Second at 43. Nauman again, grabbed at the line of scrimmage, leans forward for a couple. Actually, looks like he got to the 40, so a gain of three that time. Lucas Herbst, number 64, making the tackle. And the officials need a timeout here. Third and two. Third and two coming up for Highland. Nauman, 22 carries, 233 yards. Scots are three of six on third down conversions tonight. Oh, now we have both play. That was the problem is that they finally realized that the play clock wasn't working. Now it is. So a big third down here for the Scots. Norman on the stretch play. He's got room. Norman has the first down. Norman gets over another tackle inside the 30 as he runs over Logan Small. First down, number seven, that's Logan Small on the stop. 12 yards on a third and two. A big conversion. First down at the Frederick County 20. 245 yards now for Dane Nauman on 23 carries.
Gavin DeBoer, number nine, at the wide receiver spot, bringing in the next play. He comes into the near side. Hayden Klein up at the top right corner of your screen, but it's not going anywhere near him as Dane Nauman again gets three yards on that play. Mull with the first contact. Mullins finished him up for Fredericktown. 8-18, 8-17, 8-16, and that's exactly what Highland wants for that clock to keep going. Sure, Ty Stover would love to run another couple of minutes off and punch it in with a touchdown and make it a two-score game again. Klein again to the right side. Zach Schmidt over here to the near side. Double tight end set. Colton Stover will try to keep it. Great play by Hoflick to blow it up. Or check that, it's Trevor Ballman. Trevor Ballman saw that play coming and nothing Colton Stover could do about it. So that brings up a third and 11 for the Scots. Well, they're four of seven. They made that one just a few moments ago. Reichenbach goes wide to the right with Klein inside of him from the pistol. It'll be Nauman with some space. Looking to get a block from Klein. Dancing to the outside, but he won't get the first down. Norman on the carry. Run out of bounds. Great work by Logan Small to stretch that play out farther. Force him to the sideline. So fourth down with seven minutes, seven seconds left. A little bit out of the range of Caleb Hunter, it looks like. Bring up a fourth and five. And the disadvantage here is because Norman went out of bounds. That stopped the clock. So the Scots will go for it on fourth down for the first time tonight. They haven't faced too many fourth downs. Here comes Norman again. Breaks one tack up the line. Gets to the 20. Short of the first down. So the Fredericktown Freddies will take over. At their 20, seven minutes, two seconds left, and they trail only by a field goal. And that close in, just out of the range of Caleb Hunter, really the only option Ty Stover had was to go for that. Now once again, the Highland defense, is, which is just taking a beating here, by the running of Tegan Rule, 20 carries, 166 yards, and two touchdowns. And he's in the eye behind Mason Hoflick, and he'll get the call to start this possession Ooh, for the Freddies. He'll get two yards on that play. Layden Hayes, Layden Hayes the making shot. the tackle for Fredericktown. Otherwise, he would have gotten to the outside and gotten at least a first down and a whole lot more probably. I'll give... Rule three on that play, so second down. Cade Carpenter lined up as a wing back on the left of the formation. Now he'll move out to the slot. Rule again. Rule gets to the second level. Nearly got away there. Gets to the 35 for a first down, but a terrific play made by Matt Scarberry to grab him by the ankle. Otherwise, he might have taken it to the house. But it's a first down for the Freddies, and again, 6.15 to go. The running game is not out the window here. They have time. They could still run it in the way Rule has been running tonight. It's been working for them. They have all three of their timeouts due to the Freddies. Now they'll spread it out. Send Carpenter in motion. He'll get it on the jet sweep. Carpenter stood up by Aaron West. Brought down for a loss of a couple. But it looks like Carpenter lost his helmet when he was tackled. That'll take him out for the next play. Yes, it is Carpenter. He's looking around. Who has my helmet? There, there at Xavier Mullins behind it, standing behind him. So Carter Mole will come in to take his spot for this play on second and eight with 5.54 to go in regulation. On the Frederick Town 37. Now the clock is restarted. After the, when a helmet's lost, the clock has to be stopped in order to play or for the player to find it and be replaced. Mullins, the tight end with 
Rule outside of him in the slot. They'll give it to Mason Holflick, who stood up right at the line and dropped. Mason Holflick up the carry. Chandler Stevens and Leighton Schaefer making the play. And Schaefer a little slow to get up. Now he's being Chandler helped up. Stevens, number 44, in there for the shot. But Stevens and Schaefer blew that play up. Maybe got a yard. So third and eight with 5.15 left in regulation. This is what Bob Knight always likes to call in basketball a defensive possession, and that's what this is for the Highlanders right now. A stop here would be big. And again, they'll use rules of wide out with Carpenter in the slot inside of him. Mast is looking that way. Throws for Rule just out of his reach. Fourth down. We've seen Mass do that three or four times, throwing a ball out in the flat just out of the reach of his receiver. And it looks like Fredericktown will send in the punting team. Xavier Mullins averaging just over 39 yards per kick. Got the one inside the 20 to the five yard line in the third quarter. Zach Schmidt and Hayden Klein back to return for the Fighting Scots. Xavier Mullins to punt. Neither one has returned to punt yet. Spun off the outside of his boot, but a great roll. Schmidt will track it down and try to return it, though. Got a couple of yards, but more importantly, Highland have the ball with 4.41 left, and uh, here comes the Dane train once again. Nauman sitting at 24 carries for 244 yards. Grant, you know there's a lot of obscure grants. You know, a lot of grants. Some of them are more obscure than others. You know, five for a school district. If you take away that 98 yards grant, touchdown run, up, 23 down carries down for 146 you yards. That's a 6.3 average. Again, a bit below what he had last season, but last season was just phenomenal. First and 10 scots from their 25. Here come the Highlanders on first and 10, looking to put this game to bed. And then particularly here comes Dane Nauman, makes one man miss, gets past Carpenter, flag comes in, finally pulled down by Mullins and Ballman. But that flag came from behind the play and that's usually holding, which is exactly what it is. Highland Band has struck up the James Bond theme. Monty Norman, the composer that just passed away recently. Well, we've got a James Bond-like scenario for this uh, finish here. Highland trying to hang on to a three points lead. So backed up to their 19, facing a first and 16. And holding, the holding came ahead of the line of scrimmage as a spot foul. Trips to the right, as you can see, but here comes Nauman again. Gets through the line of scrimmage, gets to that second level. Finally pulled down at the 25, gain of six. First one there was Braden Sapp, the inside linebacker. Mullins helped him out at the end. So I'll bring up a second and 10 as we go under four minutes to go in the regulation. Toby Rogers into the game as a wide receiver up at the top left corner with Hayden Klein inside of him. Stover looking, comes over here to the near side for Gavin DeBoard who started to run before he had the ball. Although to be fair, Trevor Ballman was closing fast. Not sure he would have gotten very far. The important part though, that is that incompletion stops the clock at 3.39. And Fredericktown still have all three of their timeouts. Highland three of seven on third downs tonight. And it's Reichenbach with Klein and Stevens inside of him moving out from his H-back spot. Schmidt the lone wide out here on the near side. Stover getting some pressure and the pass is tipped at the line. 
Xavier Mullins blitzing from his linebacker spot, making the play. And the punting unit coming out for Highland. Well, just as the Spar uh, the the Fighting Scots got a big stop last time. Frederick on the ball, but Freddie's returning the favor here. With 335 left in regulation. Gavin Wigan, two punts, 33 and a half yards. The average shanked this one badly out at the Highland 40 yard line. What a great starting spot for the Freddies here. Well, Fredericktown only need a field goal to get back on level terms. However, the one time they tried a kick, it was blocked on an extra point attempt. After the second touchdown, they went for the two points and made it on the run by Ben Mast. So I'd have to think that Fredericktown would have to be stopped inside the five before they think about kicking a field goal to tie this. They're looking to score the go-ahead touchdown. And here's Tegan Rule, who has two already tonight. Flat fumble on the play. And Highland has recovered their second takeaway of the night. And what a huge moment to get it. Somebody ripped that out of Tegan Rule's hands. I'm not sure who. Zach Schmidt recovered it, but what a huge defensive play for the Highlanders. So the Fighting Scots with another opportunity to kill this game off. Here comes the Dane train. Nauman trying to break the tackle there. Gets across the 40 to the 41 with Carter Mull hanging on for dear life. Now check that. That was Mason Hoflick, 21. Number font on the Frederick Fredericktown jersey is a little narrow. Gain of six for Dane Nauman. Twenty-eight carries, two hundred seventy-five yards for the junior. Stover moves Schaefer in motion from the H back spot. Here comes Norman again. Has some room to the outside. Norman into the secondary. Norman into Fredericton territory for another first down. Oh, and that's a big play because that flips the field a bit. Should also put Dane Nauman very close to 300 yards, which he pulled off twice last season. Would have had a third one had he played the fourth quarter in the game against Fredericktown. He had 283 in just three quarters of play. Rogers in a wide receiver up at the top of your screen. Reichen, uh, Court Sears here at the bottom, but it's Dane Nauman again, stood up at the line. Good penetration. From Fredericktown's Drake Kessler, 6'4", 300-pound senior. And Fredericktown now is going to have to use their timeouts. They call their first one with a minute 51 to go in regulation. Nauman is close. 29 carries, 289 yards. One more first down would be very close to getting it for him, if not putting him over 300 yards. But more importantly, it would probably make this game done and dusted. And Highland leading 17 to 14, a minute 51 left in regulation. High, uh, Fredericktown scored a touchdown. Tegan Rule, his second of the night. And then Ben Mass ran in for the two-point convert to cut this lead to three. But in two possessions, 
They were forced to punt and then had a fumble on their last last drive. I wonder what the play call will be. So second and nine. That clock got had to be reset and now put it back to a minute 54. Again, Fredericktown with two timeouts now. And the officials are trying to get that squared away on the scoreboard, making sure that they charge the timeout. Now they have that fixed. Second and I, whoops, right through the hands of Colton Stover, and he falls on it. Stover. Looked like he went to turn to pivot to give the ball to Nome before he finally had it in his hands. And, oh, what a big play that is. Timeout, Fredericktown calls their second timeout with a minute 49. Uh, Ty Stover brings his kids over for this big third down and 16 call. And boy, what a difference that makes big, being third and 16 as opposed to even just third and nine if they hadn't gained anything on third down. Nauman now 30 carries for 290 yards. Highland three of seven on third third downs tonight. And Frederick downtown to one timeout left. So even if they get this turned over, it's going to be a big ask for their offense. Stevens in front of Norman in the I formation. Norman not surprisingly gets it again. He's got a hole. It won't get the first down, but he gets it back into Fredericktown territory. Ballman in on the tackle, and now Fredericktown will call their final timeout with a minute 40 left. So it'll be fourth and six for Highland. So what does Ty Stover do here? His second season as the head coach is fourth overall at Highland. Well, he has the offense huddled around him, so I have to think that they'll go for it. You see Fredericktown gathering together here, thinking they're going to have to make a, one more stop on Dane Norman. But even so, if they make it, they'll have about a minute and a half and no timeouts. But the advantage they have is they only need a field goal. Well, no, Highland will send out the punt team. It'll be Gavin Wigan once again to kick it away. Gavin Wigan. Wigan's averaging just over 27 yards at that last miss hit. Fredericktown have to be coming after this one, and they are. But Wigan gets it away, and that's the important part. Gets a favorable roll down to about the 10, 12-yard line. There it is. So a long way to go and a short time to get there is the late Jerry Reed one sang for the Fredericktown Freddies. A minute 33 and no timeouts. Ben Mass, four of 16 for 83 yards and an interception. Only receiver with two catches is Cade Carpenter. Grant Hartley. Ben Mast, who caught a pass from Carpenter, or from, uh, I should say, from Trevor Bellman. 
And Tegan Rule each with one reception. Tegan Rules had a dynamite night running the ball, 23 yards, 23 carries, 186 yards, just over eight yards a carry, and two touchdowns. But now the officials are huddling back at the 41 yard line, which was the line of scrimmage where Highland had to punt. And it was a penalty against Highland, so. For five yards, I'm not sure if it was a procedure call. Didn't see the signal from Joe Volpio, our referee. But Gavin Wigan will have to punt it away again. Cade Carpenter is back to receive it. Have to believe Fredericktown will come after this one too. All hands to the pump for the Freddies. Up on the line of scrimmage, except for Carpenter. Again, Wigan is able to get it away. It rolled at the 22 yard line, so the Freddies gained about 11 yards on that, but still. Now they'll mark it at the 22, so they gained 10 yards because of the penalty. Again, the one kick they tried, it was an extra point attempt after the first touchdown, and it was blocked. I have to think a field goal would be a last resort, but again, they have to get there first, and the passing game has not worked well. Ben Mast has been off target a lot tonight. And again, they'll empty the backfield and go five wide. That's Tegan Rule, who will actually he'll stay in the backfield now with Ben Mast looking this way. Mast with time, Mast with the throw, looking for either Carpenter or... Hartley, not sure which they were both out here. Either way, the pass was well off target. Minute 18, 17 14, Highland lead. Freddie's out of timeouts. Again, it's Carpenter and Hartley out here on the near side with Hartley in the slot. Bellman and Mullins out the top of your screen. They'll throw the flanker screen to, Bell, uh, to Mullins. Mullins catches the pass, gets across the 30-yard line. The clock will continue to run down to a minute seven, down to a minute six. Third down and three coming. Third down and two as they mark at the 30. Mass looking this way. Mass throwing for Carpenter, and it's nearly intercepted to end the game. Matt Scarberry had it in his hands. Last opportunity for Fredericktown. They need to get this. They're four of seven on fourth downs tonight. Again, it's Carpenter and Hartley out here on the near side. Bellman and Mullins on the far side. They give it to Tegan Rule, and he's stuffed. Dane Norman makes the play on defense to wrap it up for the Highland Fighting Scots. Well, he ran for 290 yards on offense, but he makes the actually got he made it to 300. 31 carries, 300 yards for Dane Nauman, but he makes the biggest play of the night on defense to stop Tegan Rule. So 49 seconds left. Colton Stover will just have to take a knee twice, and that will do it. So Highland start off 2022 with a win. And again, they'll go on the road for the next three weeks. They'll play next week at Triway. 
September 2nd at Crestview, and then they will open league play at Ontario on September 9th. And then we'll be back here on September 16th here on Above the Light Productions as Highland host Marion Pleasant. They'll follow that up with a game at Marion and against Harding. And then uh, three of the last four games of the season at home, September 30th hosting Shelby, October 7th hosting Galleon. They'll go to Caledonia to take on River Valley on the 14th and then close out the regular season hosting Clear Fork. But that will do it for tonight. The Highland Fighting Scots hang on for a 17-14 win over the Fredericktown Freddies, a team that many observers are picking to win the Knoxmore Athletic Conference. So a good win for the Scots to get off on the right foot and also get some uh, a good experience in a tight situation for some of these younger players that the Highland Fighting Scots have. As the student section comes out to greet the players once they get through the handshake line. So on behalf of Above the Light Productions, Skylar Kokinda and Travis Reese, I'm Keith Kokinda. Thanks for logging on tonight. Replays will be archived and available along with last season if you want to go back and look at 2021 as well. But for tonight, the Fighting Scots start out the season on a winning note, beating Fredericktown 17-14. to Good night from Sparta, Ohio. Fishburne Family Field School actually be in session, and that is September 9th. Just uh, get the next three games here, right? We'll look into that. Anyhow, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for coming. Please arrive home safely and have a great weekend.